A COVID update tops our morning rush. State health officials believe our number of COVID hospitalizations and deaths will go up. They're urging everyone who is eligible to get the vaccine. State officials are predicting we could have between 700 and 1500 COVID cases per day. Officials estimate the state could need 700 beds for COVID patients by next week. Balloon Fiesta organizers are now announcing additional COVID safe protocols to attend the famed event. Fiesta says that it will not require proof of vaccination to get into the event, but masks will be required while indoors or in crowds. Now, F uh, Music Fiesta rather is canceled and the Balloon Discovery Center will be closed throughout that week. City Clerk is expected to make a decision today whether to grant Bernalillo County Sheriff Mandy Gonzalez public funding for his mayoral campaign. The denial was based on claims the campaign forged voter signatures and fronted donations that were supposed to come from voters. Gonzalez claims the city clerk can't make any impartial decision as part of his opponent's administration. Top state legislative official is no longer in office. In 2019, Rachel Gajel, the director of the Legislative Education Study Committee, was reprimanded and apologized after she made comments about Native Americans. But the issue recently resurfaced and Gajel resigned yesterday. Erica. Here's a look at the school day forecast. It's a cool start to the day, so you may want a light sweater or jacket as you're stepping out towards that bus stop. And by this afternoon, temperatures are going to be back in the low 80s with partly sunny and dry skies. Ida making her mark in the Northeast. At least eight people are dead in New York and in New Jersey after record rainfall causes flash flooding, turning streets into rivers, leaving homes badly damaged. In New Orleans, hundreds of thousands remain in the dark and without AC after Ida knocked out power. President Biden set to visit Louisiana tomorrow. This morning, federal investigators are looking into what they say could be another serial bank robber. This is the man that the FBI says robbed a credit union at Wantabo and Lomas yesterday. He is also suspected of robbing the bank inside of Walmart last month. If you know anything about these crimes, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 843-STOP. Erica. Here's a look at the Metro Threat Index for today. It's much lower than yesterday. We'll only have a slight chance for a stray shower this afternoon or evening. The first group of Afghan evacuees arrived at Holloman Air Force Base uh, near Alamogordo this week. Now, when the evacuees arrive at one of those sites, they are then screened for COVID before being assigned a housing unit. The U.S. is now getting ready to provide housing and other support for as many as 50,000 Afghan evacuees. Breaking overnight in a 5-4 to four decision, the Supreme Court voted to deny an emergency appeal from abortion providers and others to block a new abortion law in Texas. The law is the most restrictive in the country. It bans abortions after there is a detectable fetal heartbeat. Advocates say it's already forcing women to cross state lines for abortion services. A judge has approved a $10 billion settlement for drug maker Purdue Pharma. That's to settle a mountain of lawsuits that the company faced over its role in fueling the opioid crisis. Purdue manufactured OxyContin and several state attorneys general filed suits saying that the company marketed the drug too aggressively while downplaying its risks. All right, let's get a look at the morning drive. Here's a look at the maps. They are clear. No accidents or slowdowns to tell you about right now. And here's a look over Albuquerque, a beautiful sunrise with some mostly sunny skies. We'll be staying drier today. And finally, a swarm of bees sends footballers in Bolivia diving for cover. Some of the players were stung. No serious injuries were reported, though, thank goodness. Officials used smoke and fire to draw the bees away from the field. The final sting, though, was not for the bees. The football club losing to Nueva Santa Cruz by a score of 5-1. to one. Welcome back. On this day in 1969, severe storms in Doña Ana County brought hail, gusty wind, and heavy rain to the area. It ended up causing $1 million in damage to crops, including red and green chilies. Time now for the five facts. At number five, organizers are now announcing additional COVID safe protocols to attend the famed event. Balloon Fiesta says it will not require proof of vaccination to get into the event, but masks will be required indoors as well as in crowds. In addition, the annual Music Fiesta is canceled and the Balloon Discovery Center will be closed throughout the week. On to number four now, when Albuquerque woman is expressing a frustration after home for sale signs in her neighborhood are not taken down even after the home being sold more than a month ago. We contacted the city. They say there is an ordinance stating the signs must be removed as soon as the house is sold. Most real estate agencies have their own policies on when to remove the signs. We did reach out to the agent responsible for the signs. We've yet to hear back. The city's code enforcement division is responsible for enforcing the ordinance. They say you can file a complaint by call, calling 311. And to number three, we'll be seeing drier air across the state today. Showers and storms will be in the far east and southeast New Mexico, and the rest of us will be mostly dry. 
Number two, now the city clerk is deciding today whether to grant Bernalillo County Sheriff Manny Gonzalez public funding for his mayoral campaign. The denial was based on claims that the campaign forged voter signatures and fronted donations that were supposed to be coming from voters. Yesterday, Gonzalez claimed the city clerk could not make an impartial decision on this because they're part of his opponent's administration. Gonzalez also filed a petition asking the state Supreme Court to reverse the city clerk's decision on those same grounds. And at number one, state health officials believe that COVID hospitalizations and deaths could get worse even if the number of cases level off. Modeling predicts that we could have between 700 and 1500 COVID cases and between three and eight deaths per day as well as as early as this month. Now, the officials estimate that the state could need 700 beds for COVID patients by next week. State health officials believe that the increase in daily cases could possibly peak sometime within the next week.